Hey gang, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, we're gonna go over the steps on how to paint this tabby kitten, and he's really, really cute, so I hope you guys enjoy it. One of the things that you're gonna see in these series of videos is a supply kit, and there's gonna be a link in the description box below. And the supply kits are everything that you need to paint this particular painting. So click on that link and see the supplies that you need so you can gather um, everything that you need for this particular painting. Another thing that you're going to see is what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get your initial image, your initial composition on your canvas or your panel before you even start painting. And I have a video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas or your panel, so check that out. As you go through this video, I want you to relax, turn on your favorite music. If you are of age, get an adult beverage, but I don't want you to take yourself too seriously. I want you to get expressive, paint outside the lines, get a little sloppy, have some fun, because this is your creative outlet to escape the rest of the world, basically. So I don't want you to take this seriously and I want you to just have fun. These are exercises and just practice. So enough talking, let's go ahead, get your supplies together and let's get started painting. So go ahead and move on over to your setup and get your supplies and turn on your favorite music. Make yourself comfortable. And as always, make sure you take your progress pictures and keep those pictures so you can reference um, how much you've grown over the years of painting. So once you have your traceable transferred to your canvas or your panel, we're gonna take that small pointy brush in black paint and we're gonna outline those lines. And as you work with this, you do wanna notice the pressure of your brush. The harder you push your brush against the canvas, the wider the line it makes. So again, I want you to treat this as practice and just kinda of get comfortable with your brush. If you happen to make some skinny lines and fat lines don't stress about that too much we will repeat this step at the end with bolder lines so as you can see on the eyes i did fill in the pupils and you can reference your traceable to see where that is at all right so take your progress picture and we're going to move into our background and as you can tell, I'm going to spin the plate a little bit. All right, so we're going to go for a light blue. So I took a little bit of blue and I'm mixing it in with the white. And we're going to be going everywhere from those black lines to the edge of our panel or canvas. Now I did wait for my black paint to dry. If you are not waiting, just kind of be careful when you come up next to that black wet paint so that way you don't mix it with your background color. If you happen to mix it with your background color just wipe it off with a paper towel and reapply. So again on this one I'm using the small flat brush and playing with the pressure and the width of the brush stroke and I am applying this kind of thick so that way I can apply another color on top of this in a minute a little bit more of the blue. And it's nice just to kind of get lost in the brush strokes and the movement of the paint. So now I'm actually applying more um, pure blue pigment into the background. And as I apply the darker color into the background, it diffuses and kind of mixes together. So feel free to play with this and add as much blue or even other colors at this step. But do everything that you want to your background while the paint is wet. All right, when you're done, pause the video and take your progress photo. All right, so we're going to put in our tabby stripes. So I'm still using that middle or that small flat brush and straight black paint. We're going to be filling in the stripes, some of the shadows around the eyes, 
some places around the ears. And again, what you're going to be doing as you look at this is you're using the power of observation. You're looking to see where I apply the paint, and then you're going to translate that to your painting. And I don't want you to stress out if maybe you make a shape larger or smaller than the shape that I made. As long as it's in the general area, that's okay. Um, if you're doing this painting for a second or third time, maybe you swap out colors and maybe instead of black, maybe you use purple or you use a bright orange. So the more comfortable you get with the process of painting and with your tools, the more comfortable you are to kind of experiment and maybe go outside the parameters of the instruction, which is where a lot of the fun art lies. So use this as just kind of a guideline. And if you want to do something different than what I'm doing, I want, uh, I want you to trust your instincts. Listen to that. Give it a try. If you end up not liking something that you try, we just paint, let the paint dry and paint on top of it again. So if anything that you're going to get from the lessons that I teach is trust yourself, trust your instincts, try, experiment with a little bit of your painting, and you'll be quite surprised at the results. So here, like I said, I'm adding more for those tabby stripes and some shadows on the, the back of the neck and inside the ears. If you're working on a larger canvas, feel free to use a larger brush. If you have the large or medium flat brush, feel free to use that. You'll get a wider coverage area. And the brush stroke that I'm making are kind of like little dash marks, but they are overlapping to kind of create this larger, larger organic shape. And again, if you have maybe an orange tabby, maybe you switch this out with a reddish brown and then your other shades, instead of the grays that we'll be using, maybe you use shades of orange or shades of uh, yellowish orange or grayish orange. So those of you that are painting for the first time, if you find that you're holding your breath right now, take a deep breath, relax. Um, I do notice that my first time and even, you know, beginning painters that have painted a few times, you tend to hold your breath when you do something new or you're kind of nervous about it. So laugh at yourself a little bit, relax, maybe shake your hands if you were holding your hands kind of tight. And uh, as I move into the details here, I did switch to the small pointy brush. So again, feel free to adjust your brush to what you feel comfortable if you're moving into a space. And I recommend something different. Trust your instincts. It's okay to go off the beaten path. All right, so pause the video. Take your progress photo of your tabby stripes. And now we're going to move into burnt umber. And this is going to be a kind of a dark color. We're going to be going next to the black areas we just painted. And you'll be overlapping a few of these um, areas on the black. And again, we're making little dash marks. And if you want to think about it, we're moving the brush in the direction that the fur would go on the cat. So on the face, maybe little dots as it moves into the head and into the body, longer dash marks. But again, in the direction that the fur would be going. Nice, you're doing a good job. The progress pictures are going to help as we go through the painting and you start filling up all this white canvas space and you get to see how it changes with those progress pictures. And you'll notice at the end of the painting you actually feel better about it because it looks more uh, like the final result and you don't have that white canvas kind of uh, blaring at you. Our brain interprets that color along with other colors in a very interesting manner so it's nice to see with our progress pictures, how our brains interpret things as we go along. Nice, and I'm proud of you for painting. It actually takes a lot of courage to paint at home and not have that teacher right there, or that support structure. So you should be very proud of yourself for even just attempting this, especially if you're a first-time painter. So relax, breathe. 
you're you're doing great. You're going to continue to do well, and you're going to realize that you kind of forget that the world exists while you're painting, and that's really the beauty and the joy of painting. So, take a deep breath and keep going. All right, so we're going to pause the video here, take another progress photo, and we're going to keep working backwards from our dark spaces into our lighter spaces. So now we're going to make a kind of a dark to medium umber. So I took a little bit of that white and we're mixing it with the umber. You can see on the video. And I may have to adjust this. Apologize about my hand being in the way. I'm not quite sure if I got the second camera working on this video. And again, using that middle flat or that small flat brush making little dash marks and little dot marks um, that kind of overlap to create these larger organic shapes. You're using the power of observation as to what I apply, and then you're translating that to your canvas. And we're not going for identical paintings here. You have a lot of leeway. And again, I want you to trust your instincts, trust yourself. If you're kind of inclined to put this color somewhere else that I don't put it, go ahead and put it there. Nice. Doing a good job. Hopefully you've got your favorite music on and maybe either swaying your head to the beat or singing out loud, but just relax. This is your time. This is your just space to kind of be a kid, be a five-year-old today. You do have to clean up your own mess, but you get to be a kid and paint. And whatever you do today, it's awesome. I'm quite honored when people come to my studio, come to my classes and paint, and even, like I said earlier, those of you that are painting at home and going through this video. It's just, it's an honor to be able to lead you through something that you find kind of scary. And then once you go through the process a few times, you're going, oh, that's not too bad. So I'm, I'm glad that you trust me enough to walk you through that process. And with that being said, I recommend that you take classes from a variety of teachers or check out a lot of different um, online videos because there is such an abundance of them. But take, what, take the parts that work for you from each teacher and then keep on going. And then maybe in a couple of years you go back to that teacher and maybe you learn something different. So you're building your knowledge, your painting skills, your creative outlets that work for you because really that's what you're going for what's going to work for you all right so as we're dwindling that canvas space away on this one this cat's starting to take shape he's looking really cute and we've only technically got three colors on there Doing good, yep, and you'll see where I kind of overlap some of the darker colors here. When you overlap the darker colors, if it happens to still be wet and you pick up that color, it's okay. All right, so take another progress photo, and we're gonna move down to a lighter shade. So we'll be adding more white to the color we were just using. And you kind of see on the plate where I mix it right next to the color I was using, so that way we can grab some of that color and mix it in. These are good habits to kind of get into as you mix your paint and continue to paint more. So with this color, still using that small flat brush, basically going to be filling in the remaining uh, white space of our canvas, except for the nose and the eyes. And as we are around the face, we're doing little dots and again, overlapping those little dots. Such a cute little kitten. Yeah. 
Again, take a deep breath, even if you don't realize if you're holding your breath or not. Smile at yourself. You're doing good. There we go. And again, overlapping this color on top of another. I think a few more spots on the ears. Kind of like how it's the same color, but based on the color that's next to it, we interpret it differently. A little bit of color theory that you get to witness here. And here I'm actually just going back to any of the little white spots of the canvas I can still see and placing the paint on top of that. All right, so pause the video, take a progress picture, and we're gonna be moving into our eye color. So I'm actually gonna be using that light blue that I used when I made the background and the small pointy brush. And you can see I'm filling in the entire eye space or the entire pupil, except for that white circle and the black pupil. And as soon as my hand moves, you can see it, and I'll move on to the next eye. And again, you can actually make your cat's eyes any color that you want. I kind of like when I paint the cats to have the background match their eyes. I always think that looks nice. So that's what we did in this one. Or if you even want to change the color of your eyes, if you want to give your cat purple eyes or uh, green eyes, green, like jade green eyes, go for it. It's a painting. Enhance the features that you want to. All right, so here I'm actually taking a slightly darker shade of the blue I was using and putting that on the perimeter of the eyes. And I'm doing that while the lighter blue paint is wet, so that way I can soften that line. And this helps just give a little bit more intensity to the eyes. As you apply that slightly darker blue, Mind the pressure of your brush, so that way you're just using the last two millimeters of your brush. Keep kind of a light pressure. Same for when you're blending it. Keep that light pressure so you can diffuse that, uh, that crisp line that you might get between the two colors. All right, so you're gonna clean your brush, and we're gonna make the pink for the nose. So I pulled a little bit of white aside, and we add a touch of blue. Oh, so take your progress picture, and we're going to make the pink for the nose. So I'm going to take some white with a touch of red. A little bit of red goes a long way. And you can adjust the shade of pink that you want for your cat's nose. And we're going to fill in the entire nose using the small pointy brush and that light pink color. And this is a little kitten, so I'm going to put a little bit of that light pink on his chin and a little bit on the cheeks. Because even as they're kittens, you can see some of that pink skin showing through their fur. And like the eyes, we're going to make a slightly darker shade of pink. There we go, you can see it on the plate. And just put it in a few select areas at the bottom of the nose. And again, mind the pressure of your brush. And if you need to, you can go back and grab that light pink if that darker pink was too strong. So you kind of play a little bit back and forth with, to, with the two colors. All right, so another place to take your progress photo. All right, so we're gonna go back to the small pointy brush or even your liner brush. And we're gonna redo those black outlines that we did at the beginning of the painting. Now when you do these, I actually recommend making the lines a little bit wider than you made the first one or when we made the first outline. So that way they're overlapping some of the fur color and then on the perimeter of your cat, they're gonna be overlapping the fur and the background. And that kind of gives it a bit more of that pop art feel. So again, you're using your small pointy brush or that liner brush and filling or redoing the outlines and filling in a few extra spaces. Now for the fur on the outlines, I am actually using little dash marks to kind of indicate the fluffiness of the fur. 
So you can either do that or you can make it solid, um, a solid thick line. I kind of like the small little dash marks just because it gives it a bit more fluff and uh, kind of movement in the painting. And again, overlap these little dash marks just to kind of keep that fluffiness. And if you're doing this painting for a second or third time and you want to go really kind of crazy, maybe do this step in bright red or turquoise um, and completely have a, a different type of pop art feel for your painting. All right, so yeah, and even going into where the stripes are and still keeping with those dash marks with the brush moving in the direction that the fur would be growing. It just kind of helps uh, establish the direction, the feeling, the energy of the painting and add to the fluffiness of this kitten. All right, keep going. Don't stop until you're done and don't try to judge this in the middle of the painting. Keep going. We do sometimes get caught up in the process and we overanalyze it way too much. So take another progress picture. And we're going to go back to some of our other colors and add more volume. So I'm actually going back to that kind of medium burnt umber. So go into the burnt umber with that little bit of the white. And I can kind of mix it right on top of where I was before. And if you actually made enough and that pa paint is still wet, you can utilize that again. And we're still keeping with those small little dash marks. But we're going to be putting one, another layer of kind of darkness on top of these colors. So we're adding more depth. And again, once my hand moves, you can pause the video at any point and just kind of see where I'm adding, where I'm placing this particular color. And like I stated in the beginning, trust your instincts. If this color, if you feel like it needs to go in another section on your painting, go ahead and paint it there because there's a certain balance and a certain feel to to your painting and to what you're working with. And because I'm not there and I can't see it, you have to trust your instincts a little bit more than some of my classes that are uh, that come to my studio. So if you do end up doing a lot of these paintings and you would like critique or feedback or you get kind of stuck on something, check out my patron page and I have a couple options on there to where you can get one critique a month or two critiques a month and critique even sounds like a harsh word but but feedback if you're stuck in a certain place on your painting and you're not quite sure where to move forward um, you can utilize that as an out you can utilize that as an outlet um, to kind of keep going because I do want you to keep painting and if I can help you get through those areas I want to. So check that out or send me an email um, and I can give you more information on that. All right, so take another progress picture. This little kitten's coming along nicely. So we're gonna move to white paint and a touch of the raw sienna, just a little bit. So we're gonna kind of warm up and add some of those nice um, kind of brown spots that some of the tabbies have. And again, if your particular tabby you want it to have more brown spots or darker brown on there, feel free to adjust the colors as you want to. And I do realize this is kind of light on the video, so hopefully you can see where I'm adding it or you can zoom in to check it out. Or even feel free to reference the original photo on the thumbnail so you can see where those colors are put on there. All right, it's coming to life nicely. Amazing that it was just a blank white canvas not too long ago. <laughs> I 
Really, really cute. Let's add in a little bit more burnt sienna, or raw sienna. I'm just slightly darker. This should show up a little bit more. So kind of around the nose, uh, hanging out in between the eyes and on the chin. And a little on the inside of the ears. Take a deep breath. You're doing a great job. All right, so take your progress picture. And we're going to be moving in still with the small pointy brush and pure white paint. We're going to start putting some of these highlights on around the eyes. If you need to redo that catch light in the eyes, go ahead and kind of put that on a kind of a thick dot. It does overlap that black pupil and the eye color. Again, you can reference your traceable for the exact placement on that. And using a light pressure with the brush, we're going to put some highlights around the eyes. And it's going to be kind of where the tear duct is, and then kind of the opposing side of the eye. And this kind of draws a little more attention to those eyeballs. And then we're going to put some highlights on the nose and on the cheeks and some fur areas. And again, using little dots and little dash marks moving in the direction that the fur is growing. And these are kind of the brightest points. This is the first place that the light is hitting as it touches this kitten. So as you paint, maybe you've been sitting in your chair for the entire time. When you're at a good point, I actually want you to get out of your chair, walk to the edge of the room, and look at your painting from about 10 to 20 feet away. That is actually the normal viewing distance of most paintings. You usually look at it on the wall from across the room. So what you see from that distance is quite different than what you see while you're painting it up close. So as you get into your creative groove and into more painting, kind of keep that in mind. Um, when you're in the middle of painting, get out of your chair, and take some steps back and look at it from that distance. Keep kind of a fresh perspective. Same when you take your pictures or your progress pictures with your cell phone. Look at it on the screen. It's the same thing as looking at your painting from 20 feet away without getting out of your chair. All right, so take your progress picture. And I believe we're going to be moving into black paint and kind of redoing some of the tabby stripes and a little more definition around the eyes. And again, if you need to add more black um, or maybe you need to redo some of your tabby stripes that got covered over, go ahead and add those. If maybe you have a tabby in mind and he's got a particular marking, maybe an M or a V on the forehead, go ahead and change it to um, make this kitten look more like that with those distinguishing marks. All right, so now I'm gonna actually take a little bit of burnt umber. I actually didn't wash the brush, so I left the black paint on there and grabbed some burnt umber. And I wanted to break up some of the lighter areas on that kitten's face and in the ear. So again, feel free to grab any of the colors that we have used during this painting to reapply to areas to kind of reshape this is acrylic paint, so you can actually layer it as many times as you want. You can let it dry and put more paint on top of it. So don't be afraid to push yourself past your comfort zone or maybe outside of something that you're not quite sure on. Give it a try. Half the time it might be uh, fairly successful or what Bob Ross used to say, happy accidents. 
Um, and if it's not successful, you just paint over it and don't tell anybody. So, again, this is a safe place to just try and experiment. And be a kid for a couple of hours. Which in this crazy world, we need it. And again, look back at those progress pictures and just notice how much it changes as you add these different colors. As you add these different colors um, next to another color. How does that change the way it looks? How does your eye interpret it? What do you see first? The more that you paint, the more you're going to start asking yourself these questions. Alright, so going back to the medium burnt umber just to kind of blend a little bit of that darkness in the ear. And like I said, feel free, switch back and forth to any of the colors that you feel you need. Great job, you guys. Take your progress picture. And we're going to move into whiskers. So you can use a silver Sharpie marker. Or you can use your liner brush and white paint. Either one, I recommend that you practice on a scrap sheet of paper before you do this on your painting. And I'll be keeping my painting in the same direction but feel free to rotate your canvas. If you're really good at moving the marker or the brush in one direction, rotate the canvas so you can do that same direction on the other side, but adjust it to what you need for your comfort level. And again, practice on the tablecloth, on a scrap sheet of paper, on something else before you do it on your painting. All right, great job, you guys. Thanks so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed the process, and I look forward to painting with you again. Hey gang, I hope your kittens turned out really, really cute. Um, as you're uploading these to social media, tag me at Paint with Lovejoy. I really, really want to see how you guys are progressing, how these are working for you, and just how your paintings are coming along. So please tag me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. Check out the other videos I have out there. Leave comments. Let me know what you want me to produce for the future. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day and painting with me and relaxing. Please don't stop. Keep finding your creative outlets in your life. They are so healthy. So again, really honored that you spend some time with me and I hope you have a great rest of the day and I look forward to painting with you again. Cheers. Stopping for the plane.